Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Siriana Tarot. This is going to be a reading for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. And I just want to send my love to my new Aries friends out there. Um, and I hope everybody is doing well. So uh, let's go ahead and um, get into this reading. This is going to be a reading for the full moon in Libra from April 7th until May 7th when we have the full moon in Scorpio. As um, some of you may know, Libra is ruled by Venus, which rules uh, love and money. And right now, this energy is going to really put our relationships and how we coexist with others on blast or in the spotlight. And um, these relationships can be any type of relationships, our romantic partnerships, our, you know, uh, marriages, um, they can be you know, with our family, our siblings, our loved ones, our soul tribe, our pets, our co-workers. It can be anything and especially our relationship with our higher self as well, okay? So it's really going to be a time where we can focus on how we can bring more beauty and more balance to our lives. So let's go ahead and invite spirit, angels, ancestors, loved ones who have passed, and spirit guides to this space to deliver the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs from April 7th to May 7th. Messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs from April 7th to May 7th. Messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs from April 7th to May 7th. Ooh, you get the King of Pentacles in reverse. You might be dealing with an earth sign or have earth in your chart. King of Pentacles is about stability. Okay, some of you may have lost a job, lost in an investment, three of wands, growth, expansion. Might have to do with business, but let's see. Aries, oh, 10 of Pentacles in reverse. Oh, Aries, money and stability are an issue right now for a lot of us. Could be a marriage or stability as well, or commitment. Okay. Queen of Swords. That was at the bottom of the deck, but I had to pull it for you. King of Pentacles, there he showed up again. So he wanted to come out. Seven of Pentacles. The Fool. Mm, a brand new event adventure awaits, Aries. Your overall energy is temperance. This is the Sagittarius card. This, So you might be dealing with the Sagittarius, have Sag in your chart. But this is all about patience, the need for patience. And that's showing up here as well with the Seven of Pentacles. This is also a reminder that you are, um, you know, that you might be an earth angel or that you're surrounded by your angels and you have like heavenly or divine support at this time. Temperance in reverse can be the need for healing. It could be the need for you to connect with your spirit guides and with spirit, God, your angels. What I do love about this card is, you know, she has her foot, she has her toe dipped in the water. And with the fool coming out in your future position, you're going to, you might be a little bit hesitant. There might be some healing or balance that needs to take place before this journey and before you, you know, dip, get your toes wet, dip your toe in the water, take the temperature, see what you're getting into. All right. But I really do like this energy. Um, although it's in the reverse and it's again the need for patience and divine timing at work the ten of wands this is a new beginning the ten of wands is something that has just gotten to be too much this is sagittarius energy as well so there might be something in the sag reading for you if you feel so compelled to watch it um i did that i did it right before this one and the ten of wands is all about you know it's a cycle of closure it's something that became too much, too burdensome, and you're walking away from it and you're releasing those burdens and that's a good thing. But there is a need to heal from whatever it is that you're walking away from. Or in releasing these burdens, that's gonna bring about healing. Eight of Swords in reverse. Um, this is taking the blindfold off, seeing things for what they really are, not getting caught up in worst case scenario type thinking, making things out to be worse than they really are. You don't have to do that. Just take a good, sort of try to take a step back, an objective view of the situation, and you'll see that it's not as bad as you think it is. 
and the judgment card. This is moving on. This is a second chance, right? This is like a new lease on life. This is up leveling spiritual commitment. I don't know why I just said that commitment, taking a relationship to another level, making a commitment to yourself or to your spiritual journey. But the judgment card is also, you know, it's interesting because what I was just saying about the eight of swords, using good judgment and logical judgment. And I don't know if that's too redundant to say that, but being very logical, not making snap judgments, having all the facts, whether you're judging yourself or others too harshly. I mean, you're not when this is showing up in the upright, but you know, making, you know, like with this eight of swords, taking the blindfold off. And again, the blindfolded woman is so similar to the justice card, right? Lady Justice, Themis, um, in Greek mythology, having, you know, just being objective and the importance of that in this situation. Okay. Because, you know, emotions are running high all over the place. You guys are coming out as the queen of swords, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. And she is, I love this in this deck, to me, she looks like somebody who's being proposed to. So for some of you, you know, you might be taking a relationship to another level. Some of you might be proposing or have been proposed to marriage or commitment. Um, she's actually released, you know, she normally that she has the sword crossing her heart because she's been through a lot. Um, and she's been through really hard times and she's she can be a widower. She can be an ex. Um, she's very logical. She's very intelligent. She, you know, she doesn't lead with her heart, but here her heart's coming forward. Um, and her sword is down and her defenses are down because someone or something has made you feel comfortable and confident enough. And, you know, she's giving her hand to somebody like, okay, like letting somebody in and being vulnerable. And she's not normally seen that way in other decks. So I really like this energy for you. Queen of swords, um, you know, She's a very powerful energy and she's still holding on to this sword. So she's not totally defenseless either. You know, she's, you know, she's taking her time, whatever this offering is, whatever this, whatever's coming towards her, <clears throat> whether it's romantic, whether it's, you know, it has to do with your job, whether it has to, whatever it has to do with, take it how it resonates. Um, but she's feeling comfortable. She's, she's going to go for it. She feels like she has enough information and she's comfortable enough to, move in a new direction. What's blocking you? The King of Pentacles in reverse. He came out in the pre-shuffle, wanted to pop up again. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. The King of Pentacles could be an ex-partner I'm getting right away. Um, somebody that, you know, in the reverse could be that you're divorced from or who's putting up obstacles to whatever this new, new commitment you're making. It doesn't have to be romantic. I just keep stressing that spirit, keep stressing that. It could be used to starting your own business, uh, whatever it might be, working from home. The King of Pentacles could also be an investment that you made, time, energy, love, resources that that isn't doing so well or that didn't do well. Okay, and that sort of has you feeling a little bit hesitant. You might have lost money. You might have lost a job. Could be the separation of a relationship, but it's it's something that's blocking you. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. The um, intentions that you need to make the Eight of Pentacles is get to work. Focus on the details. Put your head down step by step. You can do this. You now sort of know that you're comfortable moving in this direction, like this Queen of Swords with a person or whatever it is. And so now it's time to just get to work. Because when you do, it's going to all come, you know, it's going to be awesome is what I'm getting. Because this fool, he is so happy. And he's like, I love this journey. And look, he's standing above, he's standing above the city and he's enjoying the skyline and the stars. And, you know, he's just like, you know, does life get any better than this? <laughs> so I really do see you putting your head down and doing the work, doing something or being with somebody that's for the greatest good. And that's for, that's really fulfilling this is about doing work that not only pays the bills, but it also is like something that you feel good about doing. Again, I do apologize about the distractions. Today, all of the dogs, the dog, the bird, everybody's been kicking off. Um, so all of my readings have this squawking bird and dark, darking, darking bog, barking dog in them. So I do apologize. Um, but, okay, so um, what you need to know, we have the Seven of Pentacles. This investment is for the long term. This investment is for the long term, and 
Um, you know, it's going to take some introspection. It's going to take, you know, there, I think you're going to have like ups and downs, but as long as you keep focusing on the details and you keep, you know, you keep coming back to it, as long as you don't ignore it, as long as you put your all into it, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. This could be planning as well. There's an, a little bit of planning that's necessary here to avoid any of the entrapment or the pitfalls that you may have experienced that have to do with this block, this King of Pentacles in reverse. Maybe it was an investment you made and you didn't trust your intuition or your gut or you didn't follow advice of somebody that you trust or something along those lines, okay? But your outcome, Aries, is the full energy, a brand new journey, um, excitement, happiness. He just has what he needs. He doesn't have any excess and he's just enjoying the stars and, you know, he's got his trusty little sidekick with him whether that's an actual person. Um, it could just be a reminder from spirit again that you're not alone, that you have your spirit guides, your animal guides, your angels, your ancestors, everybody around you and helping you out on this journey. So Aries, this is a really beautiful, beautiful reading. It's kind of like you're, some of you are really letting your guard down with that queen of swords energy and getting to work and moving past these hurdles, whatever this loss of time, money, energy, love, stability whatever that was and starting something new and this i feel like this new journey is going to just bring is going to be about healing so whether that's you know healing through love and intimacy and sexuality whether that's a spiritual journey that's just going to heal and balance you whether it's energy work whether it's laughing with friends you know having a glass of wine over you know video chats whatever it might be all right it's just i feel like this really restorative energy for aries in this reading <clears throat> okay, you get attachment. So this is kind of like the devil energy about being attached to things that are no longer healthy. And it falls right on top of that king of pentacles, whether this is an ex, whether it's being attached to, you know, disappointments and past failures or perceived failures. Spirit wants you to release yourself from that. You are not your failures. You are not your mistakes. You're so much more than that. So let it go. There, if you look at all of your mistakes as learning, learning experiences, caring connections, yeah. So I'm not surprised this comes up. This is Libra energy. This is relationships, balance. For some of you, this is love. Again, that Queen of Cups, I always, you know, not always, I see her in this reading and I've seen her in other readings, you know, in that white dress, you know, somebody who's making a commitment after getting over you know, something that broke down in the past, a, a relationship that didn't work or that took a lot out of you. And, you know, with the Eight of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles, it's a new journey, but it's for the long haul. Appreciation. Number 15 breaks down to six. Six is my card of Venus. Um, I don't want to ignore here that we also have 14 breaks down to a five and the attachment card of five. 55 is a master number. It's about fluctuation, change. It's also about instant manifestation. So I feel like something is also, this might take you by surprise. You might be surprised how open you are to someone or something coming into your life. For those of us working with Law of Attraction, 15 breaks down to a six. It's my card of Venus. It's about love. It's about beauty. But Law of Attraction, one of the final steps here is, um, you know, one of the final steps is, appreciating, being grateful for the experiences that are coming to you, the connections that you've had, that you've learned from, um, the experiences that, you know, you will have, just being appreciative for all of it, because this is what's going to attract more of your like energy to you. At the bottom of the deck, we have the temperance card of patience. We have it coming out again. Even though the numbers are different, this is always my Sag card in this deck. Um, this is about divine timing, having patience, healing, and now she's in the upright. So you will, you will get healing through whatever this situation is. That was just at the bottom of the deck and my it caught my eye and I felt like it was important for you guys, my dear Aries out there to see that. Okay, and finally you guys get the sun. Number one, happiest card in the deck. <laughs> so this new journey, I mean, I could see it written all over this fool's face. Just look at the joy and the happiness. He's released the past. He's no longer attached to this, whatever this negative energy is or feelings of self-doubt or criticism. You know, just really taking a look at the bright side of things and, and allowing love and abundance into your life. 
This is a really nice reading, Aries. Really nice reading. <clears throat> I'm going to pull some cards from the Heal Yourself reading cards. This is by Ina Segal. These cards, you know, I didn't... They're beautiful images. I just sort of didn't realize how powerful they were until I really started working from them, working with them, and I just have fallen so in love with these cards. And the messages are profound and they're important, so I'm going to read some of them, some from the book for you. Say What You Mean, number 18. That's, you know, Queen of Swords energy. She's also someone who stands in her authenticity, speaks her truth, no matter if it hurts someone's feelings or not. If she's, if she's in the upright, um, you know, it's, she's not hurting people's feelings, but she's not too worried also about how it's going to affect others. And, you know, that's really the importance here of this Libra and energy. Libra is very concerned with how others see them. Um, and so it's a good time to see, you know, how have you been living your life if you've, and it happens to all of us. So it's not just Aries and this has come up quite a, quite a bit, but how much have you been living your life in your own authenticity or how much have you been worried about how others perceive you? Okay. Um, and, and I think a lot of us, you know, a lot of us have been, especially in this world where, you know, filters and, you know, taking pictures and who, who were we venerating, you know, the last, you know, 20 years, um, socialites, makeup moguls, people who are, who don't have achievable bodies and facial features because they're so heavily made up or, you know, they've had so much surgery and they're only popular because they're rich or popular for being popular. And it's kind of like, you know, how much has that affected how we view ourselves? Not all of us. And it's obviously for a much younger group that I'm saying that to, but you know, it's gotten, you know, I feel like it had gotten to a point of absurd. Okay. That we're really like you know, and, and really with, and I've said this before with COVID-19 is really putting and astrologically as well as we enter, as we have entered into the age of Aquarius, you know, we're really sort of getting out of that Capricornian energy of put, placing value on how you look or how much money you have. And this COVID-19 has really done that, you know, professional athletes who make, in my opinion, way too much money, even though, I mean, I think they should be paid for what they do and they're phenomenal, but they're not, you know, what, how are they helping us get our groceries and, you know, get medical care? They're not. And so the spotlight is being taken off of, you know, makeup moguls, socialites, athletes, you know, Instagrammers, people who I'm not knocking by any means, but who aren't essential. And the spotlight is being put back on the people who, who we need, who don't get paid that much delivery men, um, postal workers, people who work at grocery stores, healthcare, medical workers, right? And they're the ones who we need right now. And they're the ones who should be making the big bucks, right? And that's sort of being put in the focus here. But anyway, so I'm going to stop rambling on. Say what you mean. Take some time to clarify what you need to communicate and to whom. Honest communication begins with you. Take a moment to connect within and ask yourself, in what area of your life are you hiding and denying how you feel? Does your relationship with your partner need a revamping? Are there things that are not working? Who are the people in your life that you must be honest with? This is your opportunity to take back your power and share clearly, wisely, and honestly what does and does not work for you. So standing in your truth, and I feel like you guys are supported in doing that, and you are probably already doing that. When you feel vulnerable, you can be easily swayed to say what you feel the other person wants to hear in order to keep the peace. This message of this card is that you need to say what you really mean, whether someone else likes it or not. Yeah. And is that not what I said about, you know, the queen, the queen of swords? And that's your energy right now. That's standing in your authenticity. It's beautiful. Courage. Courage requires you fearlessly stride ahead despite the challenges you are experiencing. Whether you're afraid of success or failure, you cannot stay where you are. You need to make a decision and move forward with belief, trust, and boldness. Give it your all, no matter the outcome. And I see you guys doing that. And Spirit's really saying, you know, don't be afraid to make a mistake. And mistakes are inevitable. We learn from them. 
be afraid of not making, of don't be so afraid of making a mistake that you don't evolve, that you don't move, that you don't take this, you don't take this journey that we see on the fool. You don't have, you need the courage to do it. Despite what you've been telling yourself, you're ready for a new adventure and another challenge to prove that you have what it takes to face life's challenges. Stop investing in limitations, lack, and dysfunction. Okay, this King of Pentacles energy in reverse. Every blessing has a challenge and every challenge contains a blessing. You're ready to explore both. While there may be difficult moments ahead, keep positive and believe that everything is going to work out for the absolute best. You're being asked to gather the courage to be who you truly are and to stand strong for your convictions. Yeah. Beautiful. Aries. I just, it's a good day to be an Aries. <laughs> All right. Final message for Aries, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. She who nurtures, empathy, gentleness, and light. So I love this card because it really puts a spotlight on am amethyst. So for those of you who are doing any crystal work, um, you might want to work with amethyst. Amethyst is all about healing, but also attracting what it is you want in your life. Um, attracting things that are for your highest good. Whoops, as I <laughs> break my glass. Um, this is also, you know, trusting your intuition. This is falling on her third eye. So use your intuition, connect with your higher self. You can do that through prayer, meditation, um, whatever works for you. Um, and also be gentle with yourself because this is a new journey. This is a time for beginner mind. Don't be so hard on yourself, okay? Take care of yourself as if you were your best friend or you were your own child. Focus on your inner child. If you make a mistake, it's okay. It's part of the learning experience. Okay, but this is a beautiful reading for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of light in this message and in this reading for you guys. So uh, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, comment, share, ring that notification bell. But most of all, I want to thank you uh, for all the love and support that you show this channel. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Take care.